Park's book is the ultimate textbook in preventive and social medicine. And in chapter number 7, this is what they write. Those who would benefit most from a service, they are least likely to receive it. Those who have been to rural areas, remote areas, they will know what I am talking about. So my topic is the last mile challenge. How to ensure the healthcare delivery reaches the person who really needs it. Let's see what the problems are. I am not here to count the problems. I believe a problem has to be solved. So I am going to give you a few solutions which I think work and they can ensure the last mile challenge for us. We all talk about shortages. Shortage of personnel, shortage of resources, shortage of research. I have put attitude right at the top because I think attitude is the most important thing. Why? Dennis Burkett is the person who told us, he is an Irish surgeon. He told us about the benefits of dietary fiber. We all know about fiber today. But it was a surgeon who told us that. He said that attitudes are more important than abilities. Character is more important than cleverness. You believe this? I do. And these should be institutional traits. If I am hearing the Bible, it should be an institutional trait for your college, for your university, not an individual's person. So attitude is that important. <coughs> and Joseph Murray, one of the few surgeons who got the Nobel Prize in his biography called the Surgery of the Soul. He wrote about having all types of difficulties and in his on his table there is a big plaque. Difficulties are opportunities. This is the type of attitude we need. We have been talking about what the young mind should be challenged with. They should remember this. Every problem, every difficulty is an opportunity. Why don't we use this? Why do you go looking for a loan from anybody's bank? We have our own intellectual bank. Use that. Don't forget your own capital. And take a vow. We will solve this problem. Take that vow and with this, problem solved. Okay, so I want you to be involved. I will be speaking about few problems, individual problems. And when I solve this, you agree with me, join in, in raising your hands and saying that problem is solved. Okay, let's start. Why use your intellectual capacity? You agree with this? How many of you go to the gym? You all work on your muscles, all of you. How many times have you utilized the brain exercise? So if you don't use it, you lose it. Start doing it today. So we talk about shortage of personnel. Yes, there is a shortage of personnel. Lancet, a very famous journal, they have constituted a study Global Surgery 2030. And my friend, Professor Lavi of Oxford University is a co-author of this study. And they have given us some very worrying figures. This is going to be the picture line. Billions of people won't have access to surgery. Two-thirds of the world is going to be denied surgery. 2.2 million more surgeons, more anesthetists, more obstetricians are needed. Millions of surgery will not be done. Many people go bankrupt while paying for surgery. Even when the surgery is free, millions of people are going to be denied. When they pay for it, they will go bankrupt. These are Indian figures published last year in India today. One fourth of the surgery is being done. Three fourths of the surgery not being done because patients cannot afford it. So what is the solution? We know the solution. More surgeons, more anesthetists, more obstetricians. How do we go about it? Should we have more colleges? Yes. Should we involve district hospitals in teaching? Yes. Should we involve private hospitals? Yes, why not? Everybody loves to teach and Medical Council of India is already exploring and probably we will have more colleges, more private hospitals, more district hospitals being involved. So one solution is there. This is something which I always believe. We all have these smartphones. Now, even if we are not smart, our phones are smart. <laughs> okay. So why not fill them with health-related apps? Everybody is on WhatsApp and Viber and whatnot. How about putting them in local language? In Maharashtra, in Maharashtra, in Tamil Nadu, in Tamil. Extended program of immunization. Why not? What to do in an emergency? You just click on that app, not even click, now you touch. So these apps can be preloaded and the companies are making billions out of us. The least they can do is provide us some, some of these apps. Okay. 
What about this? Have we solved this problem? To some extent, yes. Problem solved. Okay, problem solved. Louder. I need more encouragement from the house. What about this coupling device? Cost less than 4,000 rupees. Again, we go back to our smartphones, attach this coupling device. No video recording needed. Wi Fi everywhere nowadays to transmit and find out what's happening. So, problem solved? Yes. Problem solved. Okay. Shortage of resources. This is my ward. So, we have shortage of beds. This is my ICU. Only six beds. The government support is 30,000 rupees per family per year. So, we are going to have a lot of restrictions on how we spend this money. So, when resources are limited, my suggestion is you innovate because it leads to quantum change. So, what type of innovation I am talking about? Starting with a simple endoscope. You put the endoscope in and see the camera inside. You need a mouthpiece. Through that mouthpiece, the endoscope is made. Many people chew tobacco, so their mouth opening is less. We don't have smaller side mouthpiece, cut off end of plastic syringe, that can be used? Yes? Problem solved? Problem solved. Okay. Now, whenever there is a hole in the muscle, abdominal wall, you put, don't repair. Now, the mesh is put. Mesh can be expensive, more than 1000 rupees. What to do if patient doesn't have this money? Can we use this? We all have in our house. Nylon mosquito net. You sterilize a piece, use this. Why not? So, problem solved? Problem solved. Okay. What about blood auto-transfusion? If patient is losing blood inside the chest or peritoneal cavity, we can collect that blood and give transfusion to the same patient. Commercial equipment can be quite expensive. What we do is, we just use the drainage bag. We just put it upside down, use it. Cost is 100 rupees. Okay, problem solved? Problem solved. Okay, let's carry on. When patient has intestinal perforation, we try to Quantify the damage, try to prognosticate. Blood gas analysis, pH analysis, these are expensive tests which are not available. So what I did was, I simplified the test. Only six very small and easily used parameters are used. I call it Jabarpur prognostic score. It works as well as a more expensive scoring system. Why not? Would you agree? Problem solved. A little louder. Problem solved. Okay, good. So when we repair, sometimes there is leakage and leakage is a big problem. We don't have ICU, we don't have expensive antibiotics. This is the result. A patient of typhoid perforation leaking stool from here, fecal matter from here. Overall mortality rate 20 years ago used to be 30%. But once leakage occurs, mortality went up to 100%. So I made a decision that we will make a stoma. Instead of repairing that intestine, we will bring that out. Let it leak outside. Instead of leaking inside, we just put a bag and our mortality rate came down from 30 to 3 percent. So, problem solved? Problem solved. I really love this operation because of its simplicity. The youngest member of the surgical team can do it. All he has to do is to bring the intestine out. So, we solved this problem. After 3 months, we closed that. So, when you make a stoma, when intestine contents are all around leaking, they have a work of digestion. They start digesting the skin. So, you have to have stoma care appliance, stoma care lotions. All these lotions are expensive. What do I use? I use linseed oil, arandika tail. Every village has this. Every civilization in the history of mankind has used arandika tail or linseed oil for its medicinal property. The word liniment comes from linseed oil. So why not? What do you say? Problem solved. Okay, problem solved. When specific locations, the intestines rupture, again we don't have ICU, again we don't have total parietal nutrition, expensive antibiotics. So we use the muscle from here. This muscle, we just take and suture it. Muscle is very vascular, very good blood supply and you just suture it to the edge. So, locally available muscle used, problem solved, no problem. Easy to use, can be done even under local anesthesia. So, all these patients who have septic shock, 
Are you aware of this term sepsis? When the toxins release from the infected site, they enter into bloodstream and give rise to problems which is known as septicemia. These patients have multiple <coughs> organ failure. So if the respiratory depression takes place, we require a ventilator. We have shortage of ventilators. This is a grim picture, but just have a look at it. What is the patient's husband doing? Providing artificial respiration with a combo bag, which is just like a balloon while we are waiting for a ventilator. You know arm wrestling, Anja Kushti. While we are doing this, we were lucky we could arrange a ventilator and this patient survived. Never give up. Repeat after me. Never give up no matter what the problem is. We can do it. So another problem is cancer of the esophagus, swallowing tube. When you make a chest opening and do this operation, again you require ventilatory support in the post-operative period. So we devised a very new, easy, simple technique which is being used in many places now. So, problem solved, no ventilator required in the post-op period. Cancer of the rectum in the lower one third. Again, it's an inaccessible position where anastomosis is difficult. Again, stapler is required. Stapler costs 10,000 rupees. Where do I get this 10,000 rupees from? Again, we simplified the technique. All published in international index journals. Problem? Problem solved. Okay. Operation for portal hypertension. When there is pressure inside the liver, the veins get compressed, the patients have vomiting of blood. Again, the same operation is required. Stapling equipment is not available. Again, the same thing, more than 10,000 rupees. We save by modifying this simple technique. Now, it can be performed even in a district hospital. So, will you agree with me? Problem solved? Oh, okay. When patients have vomiting of blood, you don't know where the blood is coming from. You have to put in an endoscope to see which part of the intestine is bleeding. What happens if you are in a village and you don't have access to an endoscope? We discovered a very simple blood test which can tell you whether the bleeding is coming from liver dysfunction or not which can be done in the smallest laboratory possible even in a smallest hospital. Again, we were able to solve the problem, problem solved. A very smart girl lecturer, very smart girl. She learned tatting. Anybody knows tatting? Lace making? Lace making? Making lace. She remembered that she can modify that lace making technique into a very secure suture. So we are using that save 1000 rupees every time and every time I use this her technique I bless her beta you have made me proud so you learn from everywhere lace making who thought it will come to my help problem solved yeah. problem solved ok now this is the issue big issue no research recently published paper tells you more than 57% of hospitals do not have a single research publication, not even one, not even one, very worrying sign, very worrying sign. Only 4.3% hospitals have more than 100 million. My department publishes about 30 to 40 publications every year. So what to do? We need this advice from Nobel laureate. He said, research is the art of solution. I always say there is no point in doing research if you cannot find the solution. By this time I am sure you have understood. My favorite word is solution. Solution. Otherwise the research is futile. Okay. So how do we go about it? This is what I was taught. Publish or perish. I believe to publish and prosper. To publish everybody gains benefit. All over the world your techniques are known. They follow. So let us prosper. Now how do we force people to publish? <laughs> Can we do this? I wish I could do this. I wish. So we have three choices. Give some reward. Give some incentives. Encourage. Motivate. Okay. Now this is problem solving. Encourage. Now my take on this is most surgeons I know, doctors I know, they are Worshipping Lakshmi. I wish some of them would worship Saraswati also. 
Okay, so some incentive should be there for worshippers and devotees of Saraswati. I also have a suggestion we can involve the paramedical staff, nurses, OT technicians, emergency medic. They have tons of experience. They are somehow excluded from this growth of research. They can give us many ideas. Translate traditional knowledge. Arubet says, don't drink water with meals. All of you know this. I published this long ago and it works and I was awarded my first doctorate. How it works? Stomach produces acid. It is resistant to destruction by acid. So ulcer is formed in the small intestine. Wild juices and the alkaline juices are there. They neutralize the acid. If you give them time, the fire brigade is ready. Okay, so what happens if you don't drink water? It delays gastric emptying and allows the fire brigade to be ready. Very easy. Another example of con converting traditional knowledge, we all know this. Last year Nobel Prize was awarded to this lady from China and she got it because she converted ancient traditional Chinese medicine to the best anti-malarial drug which we have today. And she was awarded Nobel Prize for it. So everyone speaks of value for money. Let me say this, we need value for many. Okay, thank you very much. Millions of people